Hey, a friend, Chris here from WhyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Today, I want to show you that you can, in fact, change the tempo of your projects after the fact. After you've committed to some recording or producing or programming in your project, and whether you want to cut the tempo in half or double time it or to some other BPM altogether, you can do this and everything will stay put. No performances will change, tempos will stay the same, and your regions won't walk around the grid. All you need to know is one function, and that is Sempty Lock. I'll also show you in this video, in the other direction, if you have a region of any type, how to expand or contract that region to fit with the tempo of your project so it's exactly in time. I'm going to assume if you're watching this video, your most pressing concern is that you need to change the project tempo globally without messing up everything in your project. And what we're going to explore is Sempty Lock, which is really a function typically for audio to video when you're scoring to video and you need your audio to match up with what's going on on the screen or picture, not necessarily with a musical grid because typically video and film does not match up with a grid. So you use Sempty Lock to lock your regions in place in your Logic project so that when you adjust the tempo at other points or you know, things don't necessarily match up with a musical grid. Everything just stays put exactly where you need it. First, let's take a listen to this project that I have that is made up entirely of Apple Loops. The only thing is, is that the audio Apple Loops, I bounced in place so that when we play with tempo, the audio Apple Loops don't expand and contract to follow along with the tempo. Instead, they're kind of locked to this 100 BPM as you would with any audio recording that you record into Logic Pro. Let's take a listen and then explore. Okay, everything sounds good at 100 BPM. Let's now play with the tempo. So let's adjust the tempo to something that is not quite, you know, cut in half or double time. So I'll set it to 70 BPM. We can see some changes have occurred. Let's take a listen. Okay, so already we can hear that things are not quite right. Number one, our audio regions have stayed at 100 BPM. And so they're no longer in time with anything else in the project. While the rest of the project has adjusted its tempo to match up with the project tempo as it should with it comes to MIDI and patterns and drummer. So now everything's out of time. Things have changed their tempo. This is a problem. And if we adjust the BPM even further, you can see that the drummer regions have now started to change their performance. So definitely not ideal if you have drummer regions that you were happy with. Let's go back to 100 BPM. And let's explore Sempty Lock. We're going to select all of our regions, right click any one of these selected regions, or hold control and click. And then in the drop down menu, let's go down to edit and let's go to Sempty Lock, Lock Sempty Position. So you see these new icons in each region, a lock. And what this implies is, is that the MIDI regions, the pattern regions, all of the regions are going to stay locked in place. If we now adjust the tempo of the project again to 70 BPM, we see some changes have occurred, but take a listen. And we'll even introduce the click so you can hear how everything lines up with the project tempo. Okay, so everything's still at 100 BPM, even though the project tempo is at 70 BPM. And if we hear these transitions into the next regions, Everything lines up. However, our drummer regions are slightly like not the same anymore. So we need to back up again and we need to convert our drummer regions to MIDI regions. So let's select our drummer regions and let's right click again, go to edit, and we're going to go to Sempty Lock and unlock the Sempty position. Then we're going to right click again and go down to convert and we're going to convert our drummer regions to MIDI regions. Now our drummer regions are now MIDI regions. So instead of being these ever evolving performances that change with tempo and everything else that could have an impact on it, they're locked into place as MIDI. And if we open up the piano roll, you can see right there, if we kind of squash things up, this drummer performance is just MIDI notes along the piano roll. Perfect. And then we right click again and go to edit 
and go to Sempty Lock and lock the Sempty position. So let's now, once again, go to 70 BPM, take a listen. Okay, so way better. Already, we've got exactly what we wanted. And if we wanted to adjust the tempo to 50 BPM, we can listen. Or to 200, so we're double timing. So the click is right on, but again, our performances have stayed the same and all of the regions have also stayed the same in their same placement as well. This is perfect. You will notice that the loops look a little funny. And because we're working at this point with 70 BPM with regions and performances that were recorded at 100 BPM, things are not going to line up with the grid when you start to loop. And this could be kind of uncomfortable. So in this case, I'm going to set this back to 100. I'm going to select the looped regions, right click and go down to convert. And we're going to convert our looped regions to regions. And what this means is, is that our looped regions, which the loop is just, you know, a mirror image of the original performance. When we convert them to regions, now the loops are actually their own regions with their own performances. So once again, everything should be locked except for our looped regions because we converted them. So let's right click and let's lock this empty position. Everything else is locked as we can see. And if we play with that tempo again, look at that, perfect. From here, you can continue working on your project at this updated BPM, no problem. You just wanna make sure to select all the regions again, right click on any one of the selected regions, go to edit, go to Sempty Lock, unlock the Sempty position because when the regions are locked, you obviously can't move them around. That can be a problem. So we're going to unlock everything. So then you can make adjustments as you see fit. Let's now get rid of most of these regions. And we're gonna focus our attention on these regions right here. And as you can see, because they're 100 BPM, in a project that's 70 BPM, they don't line up with the grid. We're now going to expand all of these regions or contract them to better match up with the grid of the project. This is assuming you drag in a sample or a loop that doesn't line up and you need it to. Let's first focus our attention on the audio region here. And if you want to expand or contract this audio region to lock to the grid of your project, you're gonna to wanna to go to the region inspector right here and go to flex and follow and set it to on. Now you can see immediately our region has expanded. And if we open up the flex view, we can see that an algorithm has been picked for this guitar audio file. It's a slicing mode and it's been expanded to line up with the grid of the project. Now this happened automatically for me. It might not happen automatically for you. For your situation, if you turn on flex and follow and the region doesn't automatically line up with the grid, just open up flex mode. And then in the track header here, you're going to select an algorithm that best matches up with the audio you're working with. So in this case, it's a guitar playing a single note at a time, but there's some phaser and some added effects. So it's just a little more complicated of an audio file. So I'm going to select polyphonic. That is a best suited for more complex material. And if you hover your mouse right on the left hand or right hand edge about halfway down, you should see a bracket icon. And this is the tool that allows you to expand or contract time compress or expand your audio regions freely. So we can really squash this down to, you know, a single bar, let's say, I mean, get it on there. Or two bars. Or let's go pretty far out. Okay, cool. So I'm going to bring this to about bar four. You know, it's kind of an odd time signature, three bars, but this will work out better with our pattern region. From here, we're going to do the same thing with our MIDI regions. So I'm going to select both MIDI regions that were once part of a loop, and I'm going to click key command J to join them. 
And instead of turning on flex mode for a MIDI region, because we don't have flex modes for MIDI regions, instead, if you hold option and hover your mouse again about halfway down on the left or right hand borders of the region, you can basically expand or contract your MIDI regions. So check it out. I'm going to set the snap to absolute just to make sure that this locks to, you know, the grid. Now let's take a listen. I'll take a look too, just to be sure. Perfect. Perfect. Now, when it comes to pattern regions, they're not quite the same. You know, pattern regions are really locked to the grid and we have to get a little crafty. What we're going to do is with our pattern region, again, if we just try to hover our mouse while holding option, we don't get that bracket icon. You could, of course, just, you know, reduce the length or expand it and just, you know, increase the loop or reduce it, whichever way you want to go. But obviously we can see the timing has been changed. That actually could be really helpful to us if we do this. Okay, not quite working out. Instead, let's right click our pattern region, go down to convert, and let's convert the pattern region to a MIDI region. Now, Logic is going to warn us that we're at risk of losing our pitch drum elements in this pattern region. I'm going to click OK, but if you need to preserve your pitch drum elements, in that drop down when you right click or control click, just select separate pattern region by kit piece first, and then convert all of those new pattern regions to MIDI regions. And now if we, once again, now that we have a MIDI region of our pattern performance, hold option halfway down on the edge, expand it to bar four. Let's take a look and a listen. Awesome. And if we right click again, we can then convert our MIDI region, which was once a pattern region back to a pattern region. This is since the 10.7 update. And we'll just click OK again. And the same goes for our drummer region. Obviously, we've already converted our drummer region. So that's really helpful. We can once again, just hold option and drag that right edge. So now all of our regions that we wanted to make sure didn't change at all when we adjusted the tempo, we now have adjusted all of them to line up with the grid of the updated tempo. So you can have your cake and eat it too when it comes to tempo in Logic Pro. You can lock your regions to their location on the grid. You can lock their tempo and then change the project tempo without any adverse effects. Or in the other direction, you can expand or contract any type of performance to better line up with your project's tempo. So I hope this has been helpful for you. If it has, as always, I highly recommend subscribing to the channel, Why Logic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, whylogicperorules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, emails, and posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Thanks so much.